Good afternoon. It's November the 10th, 2014. Time to wrap it up for CNFT. Uh, we had a great day trading today. We uh, caught the direction right on all the markets that we called today, the side from which to trade. And uh, starting out in the E-mini, we wanted to be long, and we had a buy in the uh, 2025 area, plus or minus. And we had a sell failure to take out 3350. Actually, it was 3250 to uh, uh, 35, and that's pretty much the top of the market. It hasn't generated much of a trade. We like the long side of the market. There's a nice little short here that didn't go anywhere. A small winner if you had a sell stop here off of our setups. Um, the long off of uh, 25 didn't hit 25. The low is uh, 20.25.50. Uh, so the long really came here off of this retest of the low and off of this B. So off of our methodology, you're long in the uh, 27.50, uh, 28 area right in here. And the first stop was really, market moved up really, really well uh, up in the uh, 34 area. Market comes back, multiple retests right here. You can be long in the uh, 33 area, and the market makes new highs here at 35 for a small winner. Then the first retest failure really sets up um, right in here where all the criteria are met, plus or minus two ticks, or right here off of this bar's low. Uh, if you took the trade here, it was a loser. If you took the trade here, you look halfway smart. But we, all day long, we said as long as this market stays above 20, 30, uh, you should trade from the long side. So we really weren't interested in being short um, at any time today. I mean, the market's just moving up. I, I mean, there's just no way to get around it. So uh, got the direction right. Wanted to wanted to buy 20, 25s plus or minus to see if we could take out the. Uh, overnight session high and the previous high at 20, 33.50, and that's exactly what happened. Not bad. So what do we see for tomorrow? Well, we got our F1 screen as we go. We get all markets the same way, and we've got a higher low and a higher high. So that means we like the buy side best. Market's still trading higher, but if we fail to take out 2035 or the overnight session high, we can trade from the uh, long side. Tomorrow is a bank holiday. Uh, the indexes will trade. The futures markets are all open, uh, but it's with the banks closed and with the treasury market closed, it usually makes for pretty quiet trading or it's explosive as hell. The market just runs big time and without any news coming out. I mean, the only thing that I could see, the news that could come out overnight that could change things. Uh, Japan's all in and then some on their uh, QE. Uh, Europe might announce a QE. I doubt, it, I doubt it. They had their chance last week. So maybe war breaking out someplace, and that wouldn't be good for the indexes. So my guess is we're quietly higher tomorrow. Looking at the F2 screen, now we frame the market the same way every time, every day. We look at it. F1, uh, capital flow, where's the big money? F2, does it confirm? So F1, we were a buyer. F2, we're dealing with a P pattern right here. Uh, we're a buyer on this, so it's a pretty good trade. Last rotation down, stopped at the 30 area. Assuming a close in the uh, 34 area, this 30, 32 area would be buy one, and down to 25, 27 for buy two. No news tomorrow, then selling failure to take out 25, 35, 37. And that's the easiest trade to see. The market is pressing, it's moving higher, but if it doesn't make new highs, uh, it's okay to try short as the market searches for support. Because the market is making new highs, we really aren't too interested um, in the short side of the market. If we do take a short, um, we're going to make sure we button up and keep our stocks fairly tight.
Okay, looking at today was a pretty interesting day for the financials because uh, I mean the the note and the bond just got slammed. Um, on the F1 screen right here, we got a higher low and a higher high, so that means we can be buyers. So if they don't break and take out uh, the overnight sessions low, we can trade from the the long side. But with the Treasury market closed, my guess is this market is probably not worth trading tomorrow. We'll just have to see. We we won't approach it that way, but it usually makes for very very quiet trading. Looking at the F2 screen, we're going to have a conflict. The F2 screen is double distribution lower, going to tell us to find a place to sell it. So the first place that I see that catches my eye is this last rotate up at 12. So we're going to sell failure to take out 12 to 16. That's where resistance is. And my guess is we'll probably uh, come into Wednesday's market on the low side into the 10-year uh, auction. And we have these single prints up here, so selling 19s to 23s would be sell two. Uh, because we are pointed lower, we've got this breakout from the London high down at 2602. Uh, we've got this, the low is eight, so we'll make a one five by one. And then 25, 29 by two. I don't look. I, tomorrow, my guess is is that the um, note and the bond probably aren't even worth trading. If the past is any guide to the future, seventy-five percent of the money that institutionally that's put into the market is done on a spread basis. Cash to futures, cash to options, uh, options to futures, something like that. And uh, it, it's pretty hard to uh, get around that. Uh, and the Treasury market being closed tomorrow, you're taking away the biggest instrument that they're against. So it's usually, it, again, it usually doesn't pay to trade anything outside of the indexes. <clears throat> and boy, the uh, knob spread came in a bunch today. We started. We went out today at fourteen twenty-one. We started uh, this morning um, just over fifteen. So they, they they hit that one pretty good. Uh, three distributions lower, and uh, we finished on the lows. So twenty-five, twenty-one will be buy one. I think we can go a little bit lower. We're going to lean against this high volume area. This is the attractor. This is the magnet that's pulling the market to it. And then um, this, these lows right over in here in the twelve area. So thirteen to nine would be buy two. We happen to break that, and then we're going to sell failure to take out four to eight. We started out this morning. All markets was pointed were pointed higher, and it was that's pretty unusual. Currency, uh, currencies were up. Uh, crude oil was up. Both the uh, financials and the stock market were up, and the financials ended up selling. And um, had a great day trading the financials. Uh, said we wanted to sell 31s, like the short side first. Uh, might take a 27 to get off a of short, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, looking at gold, if I can find it here, it is. It's still selling, and uh, I think we're headed towards uh, 1085 before it's over. Certainly, I'm going to retest the uh, current lows down here in the 1135-37 area. Market's weak, three distributions lower, um, so we have this volume that's down here at. 4460. So 45, 47 will be buy one. Actually, let's make it 45 plus or minus. 
and then we rejected prices below uh, 40. Uh, so we've got uh, 38 to 40 will be buy too. I don't really like the long side uh, in uh, gold because I, I, my feeling is we are headed lower. This rotation up was uh, 52. We have the spill from 55 late. Uh, we're at 49, so selling this uh, 53, 55 area, sell one, and then 59, 61 for sell two. But it, it's, um, you know, we're starting to uh, see the world is headed for reestablishing gold as the currency, and China has got the objective of 8,500 tons of gold. And then, of course, we're going to get stories. Uh, does the United States actually have any gold in storage? And uh, I mean, I don't know if they do or they do not, but you'll, you'll hear all sorts of stories. And one of the biggest sellers of gold futures have been large central banks. And they bang on the uh, gold to the um, futures market, then they go out and they buy the physical. We would get arrested for doing that, but it's just business as usual. It's amazing how many government entities from pollution to breaking the law to coercion uh, to extortion, just all the stuff that we can't do as individuals. How, how many agencies are exempt from those kind of um, checks to keep them from doing what we're all inclined to do given the time and the wherewithal to do it. It's um, pretty disconcerting if you come back in, if you look at the, uh, the harm that can be done and has been done. Even in democracies, or representative uh, or Republican, Republic, Democratic Republics. Um, 77 right down here, uh, stops beneath it. We're at 34. Uh, so uh, this is our, I think we're headed lower, so we'll make it 76, 75 by one. Um, it stops below 70, then 76 and a quarter, 76.50. I, I like the short side of the market. They're just put the, producing more oil in the world than there's demand for. 77, 75, 78, sell one. And 78 and a quarter, 50, sell two. Okay, on to the euro. Um, with the banks closed and a banking holiday, banks are the forex market. Uh, I would be surprised if they trade much at all. Probably famous last words, but it's not usually a day that brings a lot of activity. Uh, futures will trade, but uh, the... Um, cash currency markets won, at least in the United States. So looking at the F2 screen, double distribution, it is pointed lower. We want to trade from the sell side. Um, Got a little volume down here right under the bucket, 24, and we're 24, 25. So 24 plus or minus 5 will be buy 1. And in our 23, 75, 85 will be buy 2. On the uh, sell side, 40 to 50. And again, I, I might be uh, dreaming right there. The, the trade might actually be in the 30 to 40, but... Tried it. would like to get it done as close to 50 as we could. And then we have the spill up here from um, 70, 70 to 80 will be sell two. 
but the powers that be want the uh, euro lower, and they're doing they're pretty effective uh, in talking it down. And every now and then they act. And uh, the European Central Bank QE1 program uh, is a bit nebulous right now. Uh, uh, you hear two different stories. Right now they're buying uh, covered or asset-backed bonds. And if I were a creditor, I'd like that too. Anyway, that's all I have for right now, November the uh, 10th. We'll see you bright and early in the a.m. We'll have a lot more time if the markets are quiet tomorrow to play with the charts and talk about different things. Uh, our highs tomorrow is supposed to be um, in the mid-30s.